one AB 57 by Senator Price. Welcome. Madam Chair, members. <clears throat> Uh, Madam Chair, members, I'm here to present AB 57, a bill that would require the Department of Public Health to establish a procedure for the collection and review of the written staffing plans for the University of California hospitals. Currently, the Department of Public Health is not required to review the methods or procedures used by hospitals for determining non-nurse professional and technical staff. Ensuring that we have adequate staffing plans in place at our public hospitals is critical to guaranteeing quality patient care at these facilities. AB 57 would initiate a pilot program to evaluate safe hospital staffing levels at the five UC hospitals for all employees that provide direct patient care, excluding registered nurses who are already required to have written staffing plans. While the cost of this measure is minimal, the cost of failing to take action to ensure safe staffing levels in our hospitals pre uh, pre presents uh, far greater consequences. I'd like to point out that when, introduced, when I introduced this bill in 2008 uh, in the form of AB 2244, I received an I vote from a number of the current committee members. Uh, with that being said, I respectfully ask for your I vote on this important measure. And with me today is Michael Bolden uh, from ASME, the sponsor of this bill. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members. Michael Bolden representing the American Federation of State, County and Municipal Employees and sponsors of the bill. As the analysis points out, uh, the UC hospitals uh, provide a significant amount of support and clinical teaching programs of the UC's medical health and science schools. Combined, these medical schools and science schools receive more than 138,000 inpatient discharges, 261,000 emergency room visits, and more than 3.6 million outpatient visits each year. Now, given the sheer volume and patient care services coupled with the uniqueness of its uh, academic environment, we believe that the UC hospitals and science centers comprise a crucial component to the state's healthcare system. As such, we believe that there's a link between safe staffing levels and quality patient care, and short or inadequate staffing levels endanger patient safety, and it also undermines the provision of quality care. And that's the uh, underlying premise of this bill. We believe this bill would ensure that any such issues that are addressed by the Department of Public Health relative to their collection and review of staffing plans from UC hospitals would uh, resolve any issues thereof. We ask for your support of the bill. Thank you. Others in support? Opposition? One more. Uh, we have an approved proposed position on this bill. Um, current regulations already require patient classification systems and, writ and written staffing plans, but they don't require specific um, the classifications of concern for the author of the respiratory therapist, phlebotomist, radiology technicians to be included on in that plan. As such, um, CDPH does not believe that requiring a review of written staffing pl plans for purposes of gathering data related to specified staff classifications will render the desired information. Further, this bill is a duplicate to AB 2244 last year. And the governor vetoed that bill. And um, this appears to be identical to last year's measure and as such, the administration's concerns remain unchanged. Other opposition? Uh, I have a, I'm supportive of the bill, I have a couple questions. Uh, first one is if, if in a similar identical bill was vetoed last year, what, is, what are you doing differently this year? And then the second question would be, uh, why are the requirements in this bill targeted only to UC hospitals? Well, we selected UC hospitals as a pilot because of the um, representative nature uh, that they present across the state. Uh, and we thought it would, it, it would be proper to start with the UC hospitals as a model for what's possible. And uh, Michael, you want to respond to the other question? Um, the reason why oh. we brought uh, the, the second question. The second, yeah, oh, and, and as to the as to your other Changes. questions, Senator, the reason being is because we still see that there is a there is a problem that exists out there in the University of California with respect to uh, the sh we recognize UC is the UC medical centers are renowned and uh, uh, award winning institutions, but we still see a problem when it comes to re recruiting and retaining staff, and in some cases they're using temp temporary workers, and these workers who are there are, are obviously. Uh, providing direct care services to patients in some cases and then when this occurs what you're seeing is some patients coming out of their work with infections or, or other illnesses and we're saying 
the individuals who should be employed in these hospitals should be staff employed by the hospitals, not necessarily temporary work. And that's the reason why we brought this bill again. Thank you. Um, before we do anything else, uh, we have a quorum, and I'd like to um, have that vote. Senator Alquist? Here. Alquist here. Strickland? Honested? Oh, he was here. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. We, we, we still have a quorum now, so if we could... One left and one came in. Strickland? Here. Strickland here. Honested? Cedillo? Cedillo here. Cox? Cox here. Desagne? Leno? Maldonado? Are you here? Maldonado here. Negretti McLeod? Pavley? Here. Pavley here. Woke? Here. Woke here. Thank you, members. I know it's been a long day, and we will try and uh, expeditiously get through a lot of these bills. And since sound really carries, we hope that you will be very quiet, uh, not use your cell phones, not have them on, and take your conversations, any conversations out of the room. All right, so I was then going to say, are there any comments from a committee member? Has the bill been moved? No. I'd be glad to do that. So it has been moved by Senator Wolk. Were there any other comments? Okay, um, would you? very briefly like to close. I respectfully ask for your eye vote. Great, thank you. <clears throat> we have to see who's next. Perez, Perez, say it louder. Mm -hmm. Emerson was here first with Perez. So. Yeah, Emerson. Emerson was here. Okay. okay, I'm just follow okay. up. Um, on the motion, do pass to appropriations. Senator Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Strickland? <clears throat> Honested? Cedillo? Cox? No. Cox, no. Desaigne? Leno, Maldonado, Maldonado, no. Negretti McLeod, yes, Negretti McLeod, aye. Pavley, aye. Pavley, aye. Woke, aye. woke, aye. It's got four. Uh, that bill has four votes, uh, not quite to the six votes needed, uh, and it's on call. And we will keep all bills on <clears throat> call to the end, members. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, next, we have Mr. Thank you. Emerson. But, no. Oh. Madam Chair, I've got one other bill. Yes. May I present it uh, this time? 1142. So this is um, file, item file item 13, AB 1142, Medi-Cal yeah. proof of eligibility. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Let me just first of all express appreciation to staff for its help in um, reaching consensus, uh, at least some, some consensus as we move forward. Um, I'm going to um, adopt the author's proposed amendments as outlined on page four uh, of the committee analysis, and these amendments con uh, will address concerns raised by uh, some of the opposition. <clears throat> AB, 14, AB 10, 1142, as amended, is a needed approach towards protecting innocent Californians and Medi-Cal beneficiaries from inappropriate and illegal billing for medical services covered by Medi-Cal. AB 1142 simply makes it a, the responsibility of a hospital to provide information to other hospital-based providers, such as pharmacies, labs, as well as other providers that bill separately for services such as ambulance services uh, regarding a patient's Medi-Cal eligibility. This would address situations where a Medi-Cal patient may receive medical services from several providers during the same period, but the provider is unaware of the patient's Medi-Cal status. The bill would also require collection agencies to correct or reverse any negative information reported to the credit agency if it has been proven that the person was covered by Medi-Cal during the time period for which they were billed. Finally, this measure would authorize the department to find a provider who would knowingly bill someone covered by Medi-Cal. This issue was first brought to my attention by a constituent who received a bill from the radiology department of a hospital where she, was also, where she also visited the emergency room. The account was later referred to a third-party collections agency, and her ability to get credit in the future was severely damaged. Since my contact with this constituent, many others have shared similar stories with me. As my witness will point out, the issue of Medi-Cal patients, the issue of Medi-Cal patients being inappropriately billed is a recurring theme that causes, that creates a situation uh, that's a nightmare uh, for many Californians. The problem often occurs when a patient becomes eligible for Medi-Cal after the date of a medical service and when a Medi-Cal patient may not have had his or her Medi-Cal card. 
the provider is unaware of the patient's status or when a provider believes that he or she is entitled to uh, bill Medi-Cal patients. This bill is supported by numerous organizations. I respectfully ask your I vote. And here to testify are Elizabeth Landsberg with the Western Center on Law and Poverty, the sponsor, and Beth Capel with Health Access. And I'm going to ask, since we started at, at uh, 4.05 instead of at 1.30, that instead of uh, having testimony be three minutes per each of the two witnesses, we will limit it to two minutes per each of the two witnesses, both in support and in opposition. Madam Chair and members, Elizabeth Landsberg with the Western Center on Law and Poverty. We are the sponsors of the bill. Um, your offices each got letters from numerous legal aid offices in your districts about this problem. Just last week, um, Mr. Perez came to Neighborhood Legal Services in Los Angeles with this problem. So it, it does occur um, with some significant okay. frequency. When you go to the hospital, you give your card to the hospital admissions office. But the emergency room doctor and the radiologist rely on the hospital for that information. Hospitals, we've met with them numerous times. They tell us this is their normal business practice, but simply don't want to be required to do it. As the senator noted, it's often in cases of retroactive Medi-Cal that we particularly need that information passed along. Um, many of our consumers have had their credit ruined when this gets reported to the credit reported agency, so the bill would require in those instances when the provider finds out the person has Medi-Cal that their credit um, report be cleaned up. It also gives the Department of Healthcare Services the authority to fine in knowing cases. Happy to answer any questions and urge your support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness. Beth Capel on behalf of Health Access California. It has been against the law to balance bill Medi-Cal beneficiaries for more than 30 years. You would think by now that doctors and hospitals would have figured out a way not to put the consumer in the middle. Uh, between themselves and the credit agencies. These are fairly modest protections. These are the most low-income people in our state to whom we are providing coverage. It seems like a fairly basic mechanical protection so that their credit is not ruined. For that reason, we're in support. Thank you. Witnesses in opposition. Madam Chair and members, David Ford with the California Medical Association. We're listed on your analysis as being opposed unless amended. I am pleased to report that with the amendments that the author has accepted, um, that we are removing our opposition from the bill. We are now neutral. And I want to thank the author and the sponsor for working on it with us. Thank you. Madam Chair and members, Barbara Glazer on behalf of the California Hospital Association. We are opposed to the bill. I do want to thank the author, his staff, and the sponsors for um, their willingness to meet with us several times, numerous times. They took uh, numerous amendments, and we have tried to work it out, but we simply can't. We Unfortunately, we do still oppose the bill. We oppose the bill because it does mandate that hospitals provide information to all of the providers that may have been involved in a patient's care while at the hospital. And the problem with this is when one's um, eligibility is not clear from the beginning, when we find out three or four months later, then it becomes rather difficult to do. And we do try and get it to all the people, but if we inadvertently miss someone, then, we, then we'll be out of compliance with the law. And what we would like that for them to do is let providers know that upon request, we will always provide the most up-to-date information we have. We would be happy to do that, but we are opposed to the mandate. Thank you. Comments from committee? The bill has been moved by Senator Wolk. I, I do have a question. Yes, Senator Onestad. Uh, for, for Ms. Glazier, is it not the hospital, however, that is uh, the one who is helping the patient obtain yes. eligibility? Yes. Yes, that's correct, Senator. Well, oftentimes, if uh, one is not eligible and they come in the hospital probably through the emergency room, we will help that individual obtain uh, Medi-Cal if they're eligible. And when we learn of that, we will let um, 
all of the providers that we work with day in and day out, we'll let them know about that person's status. I mean, we, we will do that. What we're concerned about is if um, a physician came in that's not part of um, the folks we work with normally, we could forget to let them know because it's been three or four months since they may have been in the hospital to see a patient. Or not necessarily on a, on a call list. Right, right. Which pertains to any physician uh, where there's less than three in that specialty which is a significant number of physicians. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, would you like to close? The bill has, uh, has been moved. Yeah, just that uh, we think this uh, bill helps to address the, the problem, a billing problem that uh, disproportionately impacts uh, uh, low-income um, uh, patients. We think that uh, this provides a um, much more streamlined way of addressing the issue, and I respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Call for the roll. Senator Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Strickland? Yeah. Strickland, no. Honested? Honested, aye. Cedillo? Cox? No. Cox, no. Desaigne? Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. Maldonado? No. Maldonado, no. Negretti McLeod? Aye. McGrady McLeod, aye. Pavley? Aye. Pavley, aye. Woke? Aye. Woke, aye. Uh, that bill has six votes. Uh, we're just holding all the bills um, on call. All right. Thank you. Thank okay. you, members. Thank you. Next in file order, uh, Mr. Hernandez is not here yet, so we have file item six, uh, Assemblyman Emerson, AB 718. Madam Chair, both Dr. Emerson and Mr. Perez have graciously allowed me to move next because the scheduling is impossible. Fine. So this is item 18, AB 1462. Correct, Welcome. Madam Chair. Uh, Senators, first I do want to express my gratitude again to Assembly Members Perez and Emerson for their courtesy. Uh, this is a very simple bill. Thank you. And I'll do it very concisely. No opposition, no no votes to, uh, thus far. It simply makes clear that the California Medical Assistance Commission can consider the cost of graduate medical, ed medical education when negotiating hospital reimbursement rates. To answer questions, we have Deborah Kallick here from Cedar sinai Hospital in Los Angeles, an example of uh, uh, an uh, institution that could be a beneficiary of this permission to CMAC. I urge an I vote. Uh, given that there is a, a lot of support for the bill, please be very brief in your comments. Uh, my name is Deborah Kallick. I'm from Cedar sinai and we appreciate the support that we have received to uh, move this bill along. Thank you. Barbara Glazer with the California Hospital Association in strong support. Madam Chair and members, Nathan Mansky representing the Private Essential Access Community Hospitals in strong support as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any opposition? Comments from the committee? Okay. Uh, the bill has been moved by Senator Cox. Which one is it? Okay, Senator Cox. The bill has been moved. I will call for the vote. On the motion, do pass to appropriations. Senator Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Strickland? Aye. Strickland, aye. Honested? Cedillo? Cox? Aye. Cox, aye. Desaigne? Leno? Maldonado? Aye. Maldonado, aye. Negretti McLeod? Aye. Negretti McLeod, aye. Pavley? Aye. Pavley, aye. Woke? Woke eye. It's got six. That bill has enough votes to get out, but we are holding it on call because we have members in different committees. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senators, very much. Thank, Thank you me. very much. Uh, next, we have Assemblyman Emerson, file item six, AB 718. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Um, first, I'd like to accept the uh, committee's suggested amendments uh, in the comment sections two through six, but I understand that they will be. Uh, given in business and professions. Correct. So, uh, 
Uh, this bill creates an e-prescribing pilot program using a competitive bid process for the Inland Empire Health Plan, which mainly serves Medi-Cal and Healthy Families patients. E-prescribing and electronic health records are the future of medicine, and uh, once these systems are implemented, they could potentially save the state millions of dollars in Medi-Cal spending by reducing fraud and overall prescription costs. For instance, an e-prescribing system would immediately notify providers which medications are on the formulary, so only Medi-Cal approved medications are prescribed. Furthermore, electronically created and transmitted prescriptions would minimize prescription errors, streamline the prescription process, and enhance communication among health care prov uh, providers while maintaining safe and high quality standards. E-prescribing will also allow doctors to better track whether the patient has picked up their medications, ensuring that the patients have medications they need. Lastly, e-prescribing would make improvements in health care quality and efficiency by ensuring that patients with multiple physicians are not being overprescribed or taking medications that are not, con that are not contradictory in nat nature. Uh, th this bill will use federal stimulus dollars and no state costs will uh, be uh, used. I have had the sergeants pass out a uh, mock-up of what this bill will look like as it goes to uh, committee with the, the um, BMP committee. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the federal stimulus, I, I did mention federal stimulus. Oh. I respectfully ask for your I vote on this bill. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Dennis Sloper representing Reed Elsevier. Uh, we do e-prescribing. The analysis on both sides is very complete. We'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Is there opposition? Senator Strickland. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. There's no. Yeah, I'm yep. with the data toward the California Medical Association again, just briefly to say, I'm sorry, we didn't actually have a letter into the committee, but with the amendments that the author is taking, we are moving to support of the bill. So just wanted to express that. Thank you. Fine. And there was no opposition. Uh, Senator Strickland. Assemblyman, uh, my understanding is you're willing to take an amendment. Uh, to yes, make it clear. That, that's going to be in BNP and it's federal stimulus dollars, as I say, there's uh, no, no state uh, costs. That, that makes sure that there's no state. That's right. Okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, yeah. So in addition to the amendments our committee has asked for, you, you, you'll I, I believe that's in the, the mock that you have, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Ask him to restate the amendment so that we're clear on So that. could you please restate the amendment so, so uh, we can be clear on that? Uh, yes. Uh, it, wh whatever your com committee uh, Recommended in I, um, I, um, in Section Two uh, through Six in your committee analysis, as well as stimulus dollars will be used and no state mandated costs. Okay, that sounds great. And, and the county cannot ask for reimbursement of cost of state man mandated costs. Right. Yeah. Right. No. It's, right. Yes. I should ask one more time. Are, are, are there any other questions? No. Okay, has the bill been moved? Move the bill as amended. Uh, the bill has been moved as amended by Senator Strickland. And that is uh, due pass. pass amendments to be taken in Business, Profession, and Economic Development Committee. That's correct, those okay. amendments, as well as adding uh, Senator McLeod as a co author. Aye. Okay, call for the vote. Senator Alquist? Aye. Alquist, aye. Strickland? Aye. Strickland, aye. Honested? Aye. Honested, aye. aye. Cedillo? Cox? Aye. Cox, aye. Desaigne? Leno? Maldonado? Aye. Maldonado, aye. Negretti McLeod? Aye. Negretti McLeod, aye. Pavley? Aye. Pavley, aye. Woke? Aye. Woke, aye. That bill has eight votes. It's enough to get out, but we're holding all the bills on call for other members. All right. Thank you committees. very much. Thank you. Senate. Assemblyman Paris? Item two. And, and you have three bills? Yes, Madam Chair. So we'll start with the uh, first one. AB 1003, Madam Chair. Yes. Okay. Madam Chair, Senators, AB 1003 makes various changes to the law regarding prevention services for domestic abuse fund. The purpose of the program is to provide grants to organizations that are able to provide the best culturally appropriate education services for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered victims of domestic violence. 
I'd like to begin by uh, taking the suggested committee amendments requiring Cal EMA to consult with the Department of Public Health to consider the consolidation of their respective domestic violence programs and report conclusions to the legislature by June 30th, 2011. Recent amendments clarify that grant recipients shall provide a 10% match of the funds received. The Secretary of Cal EMA may waive the matching fund uh, requirements at his or her discretion. This amendment was requested by Cal EMA. Additionally, the amendments are technical and clarify, including uh, reordering the services an organization should provide to be funded as part of the grant program. AB 1003 deletes the requirement uh, to fund a minimum of four grants annually. By deleting the minimum number of grants that may be awarded, Cal EMA would have the flexibility to issue more grants should those funds become available. Additionally, the bill deletes provisions exempting previously funded programs from competitive bid process. Current law would allow for the automatic awarding of previous grant recipients. Due to limited availability of funds, this could have had the unintended consequences of preventing new organizations with better services from, uh, from being funded. All grants will now have to be administered via a competitive RFP program, including those previously funded. To ensure review of all recipients based on the current proposals and would allow better competition uh, for funds, I respectfully ask for an aye vote. With me here to testify is Alice Kessler from Equality California, the sponsors of the bill. As I said earlier, it will be two witnesses, two minutes each. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair and members. Alice Kessler uh, with Equality California. We're the sponsor of the bill. Um, members, same gender domestic violence occurs with the same amount of frequency and severity as it does in heterosexual relationships, affecting approximately one out of every three people, and it's one of the largest health problems facing the LGBT community today. Uh, and although mainstream domestic violence providers are beginning to provide services to LGBT people, uh, those services are not, that are not truly LGBT specific can be inadvertently damaging, dangerous, and potentially life-threatening. AB 1003 helps to fill this gap by acknowledging the importance of LGBT specific domestic violence services as well as the unique and frequently differing programming needs. Um, and then by funding those programs that have the proven track record and experience to serve this population. Ask for your I vote. Charlotte Newhart with the California, the American Association of University Women and California National Organization for Women in Strong Support. Thank you. Is there any opposition? We've received none. The bill has been moved by Senator Pavley. Comments from committee? If not, uh, he did take yes. the amendments. Uh, a, a very brief close. Respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you. Call for the vote. On the motion, do pass as amended to appropriations. Senator Alquist. Aye. Alquist, aye. Strickland. Yes. Strickland. No. No. Honested. No. Honested, no. Cedillo. Cox. No. Cox, no. Desanye. Leno. Maldonado. Negretti McLeod. Negretti McLeod, aye. Pavley. Aye. Pavley, aye. Woke. Aye. Woke, aye. It's four. That bill has four votes. It is on call. We'll go to your second item, file item 11, AB 1045. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senators, AB 1045 permits uh, clinical laboratories to not report CD4 T cell results if the clinical laboratory can demonstrate that the CD4 T cell test result is not related to a diagnosis case, diagnosed case of HIV infection. Current California law enacted as part of SB 1184 in 2008 requires clinical laboratories to report to local health officers all CD4 T cell test results for the purposes of new HIV case ascertainment. Outside of HIV care, CD4 T cell testing is most frequently and increasingly used in rheumatology and oncology specialties that exclusively use immunosuppressive medications and chemotherapies. Certain labs have the ability to separate out the CD4 uh, results based on associated diagnoses. AB 1045 would provide flexibility to those labs that are able to make this distinction by not requiring them to forward the test results known to be related to cases other than HIV. I respectfully ask for your I vote. With me here to testify is Linda Ross representing Kaiser Permanente. Ma Madam Chair, I'd like to move the bill. 
Uh, thank you, and please keep in mind that there seems to be a lot of support for the bill. Okay, Madam Chair, Linda moved. Ross representing Kaiser Permanente, and the bill is really more of a cl technical cleanup bill to legislation that was passed last year. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you. Madam Chair, and members, Michael Bolden representing the, the American Federation of States, County, and Municipal Employees also in support. Thank you. Comments from committee? And the bill has been moved already. Thank you very much. Uh, a very brief close. Respectfully ask for your I vote. Thank you very much. Call for the vote, please. On the motion, do pass to appropriations. Senator Alquist. Aye. Alquist, aye. Strickland. Aye. Strickland, aye. Honested. Aye. Honested, aye. Cedillo. Aye. Cox. Aye. Cox, aye. Desaigne. Leno. Maldonado. Aye. Maldonado, aye. Negretti McLeod. Aye. Negretti McLeod, aye. Pavley. Aye. Pavley, aye. Woke. Aye. Woke, aye. That bill has eight votes. It will, will be in, on call only because we're keeping the roll open. And Assemblyman Paris, your last item, item file item 12, AB 1083. Thank you, Madam Chair. Let me begin by saying that the last set of amendments have removed all opposition to the bill. AB 1083 is a simple common sense bill with bipartisan support and has received no no votes. AB 1083 amends current law to require California hospitals. Madam Chair, I'd like to move the bill. As I've said, we've taken amendments that have removed all the opposition from the bill. We've re received broad, uh, broad support, and we think this goes a long way to making hospitals a safer place, both for their employees and for patients. And with that, uh, I have with me Beth Capel, representing SEIU State's Council, the sponsor of the bill. Beth Capel, on behalf of the Service Employees International Union, we appreciate the motion that has already been made on the bill and would note that this continues the bipartisan tradition with respect to this issue. The original bill in this area was carried by Assembly Member Jackie Spear, who was then married to an emergency room doctor, and signed by Governor Pete Wilson whose wife had lost a dear friend in an emergency room shooting in San Diego. So it has a long, the issue of trying to deal with violence in our hospitals has a long history of bipartisan support and we appreciate um, this committee's interest. Thank you. Are there comments from committee? Oh, another witness. David Ford, CMA in support. Lynn. And there doesn't seem to be opposition, but is there any opposition? Okay, comments from committee? The bill has been moved by Senator Strickland and Assemblyman Perez. You seem to be on a roll. Thank you, Madam Chair. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Okay. Call for the vote. On the motion to do pass to appropriations, Senator Alquist. Aye. Alquist, aye. Strickland. Aye. Strickland, aye. Honested. Honested, aye. Cedillo. Cox. Cox, aye. Desaigne. Leno. Maldonado. Maldonado, aye. Negretti McLeod. Negretti McLeod, I Pavley. Pavley, I Woke. Uh, that bill has seven votes. Uh, we are holding all the bills on call. I might like thank to you say, very much. Thank you. I might like to say to my members that Assemblyman Block uh, has the last bill, just so we all know that uh, Mr. Hernandez put his bill over and Mr. Jones put his other bill over. And that has all happened in the last short amount of time, 30 minutes or what have you. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Hendon just put both bills over and uh, Mr. Jones put one over. And I'll, 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 I'll go through which ones as soon as, as, soon as uh, Mr. Block is through. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, I'm here today to present AB 1317. First of all, I'd like to accept the amendments that are outlined in the analysis on pages 5 and 6 under comments as author's amendments. Secondly, Madam Chair, if I may thank uh, your staff, you and your staff, Concepcion Tadeo, for the hard work on this bill. I know Ms. Tadeo spent numerous hours consulting with interested stakeholders and has drafted amendments, and I'd like to thank her for that hard work that has really taken out all the opposition. Um, AB 1317 is very important for a number of reasons. Over the past two decades, California has become the epicenter of a multi-million dollar global market in human eggs that recruits healthy young women, often college students, as egg providers in advertisements that offer thousands of dollars with no mention of negative side effects. What AB 1317 would do is simply require a warning on all of these ads for human egg donation for fertility purposes placed by entities that do not comply with the American Society for Reproductive Medicine guidelines for egg donation. 
This bill also extends current protections in state law governing informed consent for egg donations for research and applies those guidelines to egg donations for fertility purposes as well. AB 1317 will alert unsuspecting young women that they need to consult with their physician before signing on the dotted line. With me here to testify are two witnesses, uh, Dr. Diane Beeson, a medical sociologist and professor at CSU East Bay, who studied these issues extensively and conducted interviews of women who have undergone the procedure. And my second witness is Dr. Tina Stevens, who's a historian of bioethics and biotechnology and who lectures at CSU San Francisco. And before we do that, I'm just going to mention that as this is the last bill, that sometime between 10 to 5, and five minutes to five, we will do the final roll call on all the bills. Jones put it over. Uh, the uh, assembly committee bill by Mr. Jones is put over. In fact, let's just take a moment now to talk about the bills that are being put over, and I'll mention the authors' names and the bill numbers. There are. Um, the, there are, okay, the first bill to be put over was a uh, file item two by Assemblyman Portentino, AB 221. The second item to be put over is file item three by Assemblywoman Ma, AB 543. The third item to be put over is uh, um, AB 657, file item four by Assemblyman Hernandez. And the last, uh, this is not correct because there's going to be another one put over. So there are two more to be put over. The next one is file item 5, AB 684 by Assemblywoman Ma. Okay, so we have more than that put over. The next one um, would be file item 8. File item 7, AB 818 by Assemblyman Hernandez. The next one put over is, is file item 8, uh, AB 931 by Assemblyman Fletcher. Uh, the next one is file item 15 to be put over, AB 1303 by... Okay. Um, I, who requested the put over? It's not file. Five, The next one to be put over is file item 9, AB 995 by Assemblyman Block. Uh, the next one to be put over, we, we all together, is file item 15, AB 1303, 83-1383 by Assemblyman Jones. And two more, uh, the next one to be put over is file item 16 by Assemblyman Hill. And the last one to be put over is uh, uh, file item uh, 19, AB 1541, the yeah. Assembly Health Committee. Yeah. And file item uh, 17, AB 1457 by Assemblyman Davis. Uh, Madam Chair, may I ask a very dumb question here? May I ask any question? If all of these bills are to be put over, does that mean that we are going to have an additional hearing, or does that mean that we're going to have a super duper whopper of a hearing. Well, it does mean that because we met today after a very long day, that the hearings we have next week and the week after will be shortened by at least an hour, hour and a half. No, no, but we will have more bills. Is that well, correct? No, I'm answering the question. I'm just saying I, I don't know which way we will go. Uh, I will talk to the committee staff and figure out what is the, the best plan. But certainly so we because we, we met this afternoon, uh, it will save us you know, a good hour that we would have had additionally next week. All right, so we're all together on the bills that have been put over. <laughs> Assemblyman Block. Okay, um, as I was saying, members, uh, my witnesses are prepared to speak. Uh, Dr. Beeson. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman and committee members. I'll be very brief. Uh, as uh, Assemblyman Block said, I'm a medical sociologist and professor at Cal State University East Bay. Uh, ad soliciting egg donors have become commonplace on my campus and campuses throughout the state. Students are increasingly looking to egg donation as a way of coping with mounting financial pressures. My colleagues and I have become quite concerned by the surprising frequency with which we are seeing former donors who have experienced serious damage to their health and fertility. Um, some of the short-term problems are clearly direct consequences of egg uh, harvesting. 
Uh, we don't know about how much of the long-term effects such as cancers are caused by this because we uh, do no follow-up. Um, but the ASRM does acknowledge up to 2% of patients develop severe ovarian hyperstimulation, which can require hospitalization and in some cases ki kidney failure and even death. Yet the students we see are uh, report to us that they've been very much reassured. They don't uh, remember disclosure about these dangers and they uh, most have not even considered long-term risks such as infertility and cancer. And yet we know these are major concerns of many experts. As the 2007 Institute of Medicine report acknowledged, uh, there is reason for concern and we need longer follow-up studies to give definitive answers. But since the IOM report, there's a new Israeli study that shows uh, women who used ovulating, ovulation-inducing drugs experience significantly a higher overall risk of cancer, particularly cancer of the uterus. So in the absence of a national or statewide registry to document the effects of egg donation, and in the face of a growing market in human eggs, the least we can do is encourage young women to consider early on the possibility of risks. And AB 1317 is a small step in that direction. Thank you. Very good to the second. What I'm going to do, if I could just do the other witness in support the, and then... It was the first sentence that I didn't understand. The first, what the, she, okay. Senator, the first I'm sentence, sorry. you said something about increasing costs or increase. Increasing. It was the very first sentence that you. Uh, I said that I introduced myself. Uh, oh, I said that um, students are increasingly turning to egg donation as a way of coping with the mounting financial pressures. So you're saying they're selling? Education. Yes. Okay. Sure. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Next witness. Okay, it's me. <laughs> so this is the second witness. Yes. yes. Uh, my name is Tina Stevens. I am a faculty member at San Francisco State University and a co-founder of the Alliance for Humane Biotechnology. My student, Stephanie Smith, is going to hold up two pictures for you of Jessica Grace Wing, who, is a, who was a sta student at Stanford, and her mother, uh, Dr. Jennifer Schneider. And I'm going to uh, talk with you. <clears throat> I'm going to speak for Dr. Jennifer Schneider. My daughter, uh, Jessica Grace Wing, was a student at San Francisco, uh, sorry, Stanford University, when she saw an ad soliciting young women to become egg donors. She called and asked me, her doctor, mother, what I thought about it. I said, the most important thing is your safety. She said, don't worry, mom. The agency told me it's safe, and they use a reputable IVF clinic and experienced doctors. I didn't know, and she didn't know that no one has kept track of egg donors after donation, and no one knows whether there are long-term risks for them. Jessica injected herself with large doses of hormones for a month, donated the eggs, and did this three times. Six years later, she was dead of a disease that usually affects people my age, not hers, colon cancer. She had no family history of the disease, and DNA studies of her tissue later showed she was not at genetic risk for it. Since then, I've done a lot of research about what is known about the risks of egg donation. My goal <clears throat> is to change things so that records are kept of egg donors, just like records are kept of kidney donors, so that researchers can systematically study potential cancer and infertility risks. But this will take years. In the meantime, the most ethical and practical thing that you can do is to put a warning on ads which will serve to alert young women that health risks are something to consider. Maybe Jessica would be alive today if she had seen such a warning. Thank you. Thank you. If others would like to say their name and that they are in support. You want to say it? My name is Stephanie Smith. I'm in support of AB1217. Charlotte Newhart with California <laughs> National Organization for Women and the American Association of University Women. Strong support. Thank you. Uh, witnesses in opposition. Good afternoon, Shannon Good afternoon. Crowley, representing the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, District 9, and the American Society for Reproductive Medicine. And we appreciate very much the tireless hours of your staff and the author staff to come up with amendments and with these amendments we remove our opposition. I would like to also add that the American Society for Reproductive Medicine is working closely with the Centers for Disease Control to see if there can be something done about a national registry. Great. Thank you very much. Is there any opposition? 
There is no opposition. Underwood. Comments uh, from the committee? The bill has been moved by Senator Leno. No comments from the committee. Uh, if you would, Assemblyman uh, Block, if you would very briefly like to close. I simply urge your aye vote. Thank you. Thank you. Call for the vote. Senator Alquist. Aye. Alquist, aye. Strickland. Honestad. Aye. Honestad, aye. Cedillo. Aye. Cedillo, aye. Cox. No. Cox, no. Desaigne. Aye. Desaigne, aye. Leno. Aye. Leno, aye. Maldonado. Aye. Maldonado, aye. Negretti McLeod. Negretti McLeod, aye. Pavley. Aye. Pavley, aye. Woke. Strickland, no. That bill has eight votes. It's going to be on call for about 30 seconds. Okay. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. She said everything was on. We have left everything on call, members, and so we are going to go back over all of the bills. Uh, item one, you may, you may consider. Okay. Item one, AB 57. Six. On a vote, on a motion do pass to appropriation, Senator Strickland? No. Strickland, no. Honested? No. Honested, no. Cedillo? Item 57, uh, AB 57. By it's got four ayes and four noes. Uh, that bill has four ayes. No. No, you haven't. Cedillo? Desaigne, Desaigne, I, Leno, aye. Leno, I. It's got six to four. Uh, that bill has six votes. Cedillo, I. Seven votes. The bill's out. Yes, you did. That bill has seven votes. It is out. Item two, AB 221, <coughs> on a motion do pass to a, oh, was a, I'm sorry. Item two was put over. Item three, item, yes. Yes. Item three was put over. Item four was put over. Item five was put over. Item six is AB 718. On a motion do pass to BPED, Senator Cedillo. Desaigne. Desaigne, I. Leno. Aye. Leno, I. Cedillo, I. Cedillo, I. It's got 11. How many? 11. That bill has 11 votes. It is out. Item seven was put over. Item eight was put over. Item nine was put over. Item 10, AB 1003 by Assemblymember Perez. On a motion do pass as amended to appropriation, Senator Desaigne. Desaigne, aye. Leno. Aye. Leno, aye. Maldonado. Cedillo, aye. Cedillo, aye. Maldonado. It's got seven. That bill has seven votes. It is out. Item 11, AB 1045 by Assemblymember Perez. On a motion do pass to appropriation, Senator Cedillo. Aye. Cedillo, I. Desaigne. Desaigne, I. Leno. Aye. Leno, I. It's got 11 eyes. Deppel has 11 votes. It is out. Item 12, AB 1083 by Assemblymember Perez. On a motion do pass to appropriations. Senator Cedillo. Aye. Cedillo, I. Desaigne. Aye. Desaigne, I. Leno. Aye. Leno, I. Woke. She's got 10. Deppel has 10 votes. It is out. Item 13, AB 1142 by Assemblymember Price, Senator, oh, on a motion of due pass is amended to appropriations, Senator Cedillo? Cedillo, I. Desaigne? Desaigne, I. It's got eight. That bill has eight votes. It is out. Item number 14, AB 1317 by Assemblymember Block, on a motion due pass is amended, Senator Woke. And she's gone. She's it's got eight. That bill has eight votes. It is out. Item 15 was put over. Item 16 was put over. 17 over. Item 18, AB 1462 by Assemblymember Fuhr. On a motion do pass to appropriations. Senator Honested. Aye. Honested, aye. Cedillo? Aye. Cedillo, aye. Desaigne? Aye. Desaigne, aye. Leno? Aye. Leno, aye. It's got 11. That bill has 11 votes. It is out. And item 19 was put over. Uh, members, thank you very much. Meeting adjourned.